Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. What happens when a certified genius diagnosed with schizophrenia decides that the future of society is doomed for disaster without serious intervention? Ted Kaczynski was a domestic terrorist who believed that industrial society had been a disaster for the human race. Over 17 years, he mailed and placed 16 homemade explosive devices targeted at universities and airlines. This led him to develop the moniker of the Unabomber. These bombings were conducted as a method to gain notoriety in order to demand large organizations to publish his manifesto. And it worked. He offered an ultimatum, publish the manifesto and the bombings will stop, or don't, and he'll send another bomb to an unspecified location with intent to kill. This is important for later. He had his manifesto published and it was titled Industrial Society and Its Future. From this point, Ted's brother David Kaczynski, after the publication of the manifesto, became increasingly worried. He sent a tip to the FBI, telling them that he believed that the bomber was his, quote, troubled brother Ted, due to the similarity and style of his writings with that of the manifesto. Ted was a professor at Harvard. David had access to many of his writings. The FBI's linguistics department determined that these papers and writings, and the author of the manifesto, were indeed the same person. David then led them to the cabin that he and Ted had constructed, and Ted was subsequently arrested. He was charged with 10 counts of mailing slash transportation slash use of bombs, along with three counts of first degree murder, which I'll discuss shortly. Ted ended up pleading guilty, and he was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. He would then spend the rest of his life in prison, where he actually developed a correspondence with people who gained interest in his, albeit radical, ideology until his death of late stage cancer in 2023. Ted's most serious charge were the three counts of first-degree murder. Canada recognizes four types of homicide, that being first-degree, second-degree, manslaughter, and infanticide. First-degree murder is defined as deliberate, planned killing, emphasizing premeditation. The perpetrator must also have the sole intent of killing the victim with their actions, along with aggravating factors being present. You remember the phrasing of uh, Ted's demand to publish the manifesto? Yeah. So while premeditation was clearly evident as the bombs were homemade and sent over a 17 year period, and aggravating factors being he was already in the commission of several other serious crimes while sending the bombs and making the bombs through the mail, <laughs> um, the intent to kill aspect was a little bit up in the air until that demand, of course, uh, the demands for publication destroyed any hope of his defense arguing that any of the bombings weren't meant to kill, rather just to hurt slash gain not notoriety to popularize his ideology. Ted's schizophrenia was also a very large role here, as it changes how an individual experiences the legal system. Oftentimes, the defense will argue for a verdict of NCRMD, not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. Um, at the time of the offense, they have to be incapable of understanding that their actions were wrong or the consequences of their actions. Ted was not found NCRMD, despite his diagnosis of schizophrenia, and you might ask, well, why? The bombings were over 17 years in time span, right? So along with the bombings being, the bombs themselves being homemade, that's planning and that's intent, right? Um, the concealing of his identity spurred the prosecution to argue that he was aware of the consequences of his actions, so he tried to hide them. What's more, his manifesto displayed a clear, coherent ideology behind the crimes, even if it was a little bit radical. Uh, furthering the belief that his schizophrenia was not impairing his thought process at the point where he was committing the crimes. Therefore, NCRMD was inapplicable. Ted was also facing the death penalty, so that also played a role. Because, you know, if uh, we go that route and you fail, you're going to be executed. He didn't want that. Um, if Ted was tried in Canada, things may have played out a little bit differently. Uh, Canada doesn't have the death penalty. What's more, we also are, we put more emphasis on rehabilitation and we're willing to accept testimony from uh, experts and 
who knows? Maybe if it was tried here, he actually might have been found NCRMD. Who knows? Anyways, thank you for coming to my TED Talk.